With the job market currently being so tough right now, especially in the tech sector where layoffs are happening and employers' expectations are extremely high, certifications can be a great addition to your CV. I've seen a lot of blogs and videos recommending outdated certifications or ones that aren't really in demand in the industry anymore. And this is why I decided to make this video to give you an updated overview about the most valuable certifications in the data engineering space. For each of the certifications, I'm going to explain when it makes sense to go for them and when it doesn't, and also how to prepare for these exams. This list is based not only on my experience in the data space, but also from job descriptions that directly mention these certifications as preferred or sometimes even as required for many of the data engineering roles. Before I dive into the actual recommendations, let's quickly clarify three key points about how I've selected these certifications. First of all, certifications that are free and basically just certificates of completion. They may be great for learning purposes, but they don't really have much value in the job market. Sometimes it still makes sense to go for them, but mainly for the learning purposes. This is why all the certifications in this list here are paid certifications. Second point is that all certifications in this list here are cloud-based certifications. Cloud is clearly the state of the art, especially in the data space, and these certifications do have the most value in the market. Last point before we get started is I'm focusing on data engineering certifications here, but for a lot of people it does make sense to do other certifications first, when they don't have much knowledge, for example, about a certain cloud platform. In this case, I would do a foundation and certification first, and then as a next step, look into the data engineering focused ones that I'm recommending in this video. With that being said, let's get started with the recommendations. My first recommendation in this list is a certification from AWS. AWS is the cloud platform with the biggest market share, and there have been quite some changes in its data focused certifications over the last couple of years. There was the big data specialty certification a few years ago, followed by the data analytics specialty certification, which focused both on data engineering, but also had quite some focus on analytics related topics. About a year ago, AWS finally introduced a data engineering focused certification, the AWS Certified Data Engineer Associate, which is now the go-to certification for data engineers when you work with AWS. I took the certification myself and even though it's an associate level certification, it requires a good understanding of data engineering concepts as well as AWS services needed to build proper data solutions on AWS. The exam guide provided by AWS mentions that candidates should have an equivalent of two to three years of experience in data engineering before attempting the certification. However, in my opinion, it's not necessarily true. The exam also requires quite a bit of AWS knowledge, so it definitely helps if you have already worked with AWS or you even hold an AWS certification like the AWS Solutions Architect Associate. When it comes to preparing for certifications in general, I always follow the same strategy. If I don't have much experience at all with this topic, I start by watching some video courses. Afterwards, I validate my knowledge and gain some confidence with practice exams. And afterwards, I dive deeper into those topics where I did not score well in the practice exams by looking at documentation, blogs and stuff like that. For this certification in specific, there are quite some Udemy courses, so you can have a look there. And there are also quite a lot of practice exam questions out there you can use for preparation. I do even have my own practice exam questions for this course. So if you're interested in that, have a look on Udemy. Over 3000 students already used that practice exam set to prepare for the certification. Let's continue with the next hyperscaler, which is Microsoft Azure. Here also a lot changed in recent years, especially about one and a half years ago when Microsoft Fabric was introduced. In Azure, you might think the Data Engineer Associate certification might be the right one, but personally, I wouldn't recommend it anymore. I've done it myself and it's quite outdated. It has a lot of information about services like Synapse, which are kind of dead as of now with the introduction of Microsoft Fabric. So instead, I would look into the Microsoft Fabric certifications. There are two of them. One was released about a year ago, the Microsoft Fabric Analytics Engineer, which I have also done myself. This was the first Fabric certification that was released and I did it to get some confidence on Microsoft Fabric. The problem with this certification is that it does not only focus on data engineering and also covers a lot of topics around Power BI and DAX and all of these kind of things. 
So instead, I would recommend here as a data engineer to look for the new certification that was recently released by Azure, which is the Fabric Data Engineer Associate Certification. As the certification is so new, there are not really that much video courses I can recommend as of now. So I would just go with the study guide provided directly by Microsoft. And afterwards, you can do some practice exams. I've seen on Udemy, there are already some uploaded. So you can have a look there. There are also some provided directly by Microsoft. Number three and also the third hyperscaler is Google Cloud Platform. Even though GCP does not have a large market share compared to the other two hyperscalers, they have quite a big footprint in the data space, mainly because of Google BigQuery. It makes sense to look into GCP certifications if your company is already using GCP or if you start to apply for jobs that may require GCP. For example, for a lot of consulting positions, it's pretty good to know a bit about GCP as not many people are certified in Google Cloud. This way you could stand out from the competition. The certification again covers some general data engineering topics, but also requires you to know about the GCP services, how they're used, how they are different from each other, and how to stitch them together. To prepare for the exam, you can have a look at Dan Sullivan's Udemy course. This one seems to be quite popular and also does have some sample questions, but this might be not the most up-to-date resources as the exam content changed in November 2023. Another preparation recommendation would be the video course and practice exams by Ben McKenzie on GCP Study Hub as this material is up to date with the most recent version and looks very solid. Also it costs only $10 and even offers a money back guarantee if you do not pass the exam, so there is not really much to lose here. Now we've covered all of the hyperscaler native certifications that I would recommend, but as you might know, while the hyperscalers do offer a lot of functionality to build data platforms, there are two more key players in the space that work across all three major clouds and focus solely on data functionalities. Let's start with Databricks, which has been leading the way in the space, especially in the last couple of years. Databricks basically offers all of the functionalities you need to build a proper modern data platform, including batch and stream processing, traditional machine learning, but also all of the new Gen AI topics, and also all of the governance functionality that you need to build a proper data platform for an enterprise. Since Databricks was created by the original founders of Apache Spark, which is, as you probably know, the most widely used tool or framework for distributed data processing, and most data engineers work with Spark daily. Of course, Databricks does include a lot of data engineering functionalities within the platform. There are two main certifications focused around data engineering within Databricks. There is the Data Engineer Associate and the Data Engineer Professional Certification. The Associate Certification focuses more on fundamental data engineering concepts and how to implement them within Databricks. Also stuff like the Lakehouse architecture and how to tackle like standard data engineering problems. To prepare for the associate certification, I would recommend to start by watching the Lakehouse fundamentals course provided by Databricks. And afterwards, again, I would recommend going through some Udemy courses and practice exams. There is one provided by Dero Al Hussein, which I can recommend. I hope I pronounced that correctly. And this one also includes some practice exam questions. Regarding the data engineer professional one, this is definitely more advanced and it is probably even the hardest one to pass in this whole list here. It requires a deep understanding of Spark and how to build basically production ready pipelines using Spark. It focuses on common data problems that occur when building production ready pipelines. And it also covers Spark structured streaming quite a lot. So you need to get familiar with this as well. To prepare for a professional one, there is again a course by the Rao Al Hussein, and this is specifically designed for the professional certification. So again, I'm recommending going through this course, going through the practice exam questions, and then maybe tackle your gaps by again, looking into documentation, blog posts, and all of that. I have completed both myself and I can definitely recommend them. So you're going to see them in a lot of the job description as an preferred or required certification to have for a role. And what I really like about the Databricks certifications is that they do not only focus on Databricks platform specific services to solve problems as cloud certifications often do, 
Instead, they emphasize also on general data engineering concepts and open source technologies like Spark and like Delta Lake. Next, let's have a look on the other big player in the data platform space apart from the hyperscalers, which is Snowflake. Snowflake works across all of the three major clouds as well and has its core strength in the data warehousing domain. When does it make sense to go for the Snowflake certification? Definitely if you work for a company that is heavily using Snowflake, a certification can help here to build your expertise and to grow in your current role but also if you want to apply for a snowflake related position and do not have that much practical experience in snowflake it could also make sense to work on a certification here when looking at the available certifications for snowflake you will see that there is a data engineering certification but to be honest, I have not seen this being very popular or being actively requested in any job descriptions. So maybe it makes more sense here even for data engineers to go with the foundational certification like the Snow Pro Core. The Snow Pro Core provides you with a solid foundation of Snowflake concepts and will also help you with data engineering problems. So after completing the foundational Snow Pro Core certification, you could either go with the data engineer one by Snowflake or you focus on a certification of another tool that is frequently used together with Snowflake. More about that in a second. To prepare for Snowflake certifications and in specific for the Snow Pro Core, I would recommend the Udemy course by Nikolai Schula. I've watched this course myself when preparing for the certification. It does covers all of the content required to pass the certification and also follows a practical approach during this course instead of just telling the theoretical knowledge that you need to pass. And this course also does cover practice exam questions. So with that, you can again gain some confidence before taking the exam. If you still decide to go with the Snowflake Data Engineering certification, there are not many video courses to prepare for that. So in this case, I would mainly stick with the exam guide and the official documentation directly provided by Snowflake. And then again, for the practice exams, there are some on Udemy and also directly provided by Snowflake. Apart from the data platforms that we have already discussed, there are some tools that are frequently used together to extend their functionalities. One of the most popular tools that came up in the recent years and that is used in a lot of data architectures is dbt. dbt helps you to productionalize your data transformations by providing this framework that helps you to apply software engineering best practices to your data pipelines for your SQL based transformations. It allows you to easily deploy your transformations to different environments, keeping your code dry, and it also becomes very easy to add unit tests to your data pipelines. Here, dbt does not execute the queries itself. Instead, it acts as kind of a wrapper and executes the queries on a configured backend engine. This backend engine could be within Snowflake, Databricks or Google BigQuery. So dbt has a converter for most of the modern data platforms. The certification I can recommend for dbt is the dbt Certified <laughs> Analytics Engineer, as this certification covers all of the fundamentals that you need to get started with dbt. DBT. To prepare for the exam, there is again a great Udemy course, which is called DBT Bootcamp Zero to Hero. And it also again includes practice exams questions so that you can make sure that you're well prepared for the actual exam. All right, and that's already it. I hope this list was helpful for you and gave you a good overview about current relevant data engineering certifications. I know there are a lot of other certifications out there as well, but in my opinion, this is a, definitely a good way to start with and afterwards you can still look for others. Final words to keep in mind, certifications alone will not guarantee you a job or a career jump. It's always key to also have hands-on experience. You should have built some personal projects where you have implemented some end-to-end -end data pipelines that you can also show off in your interviews. Let me know what you think about this list and what your certification plans are for this year. And also if you have any other certifications that you would include in this list. And with that being said, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.